Well, on top of the video store is a show called Off Our Stones. We got Andrew and me and a friend Cody. We're gonna rank some fucking songs. Rank them songs, songs, songs. Gonna end rank songs. The longest list in the whole damn town. Longer than old King Kong. Meaner than a, ah, meaner than a junkyard dog. You remember we rewrote that for one episode? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, welcome back to Off Our Stone, guys. The uh, the show where Brooklyn and I said, um, "Screw Rolling Stone. We can make a better top 500 list." Uh, we probably could also make a better 250 guitarist list. To be completely honest, I don't know. That, they, they got the number one right. They got the number one. I know nothing about a guitarist, but I know a few names. <laughs> Clapton is one that I hear regarded as like top one of the tops, thirty-five, and there are a few in those top ten. I'm like, who, who? <laughs> That, uh, that literally, they need to let their action. I swear, Rolling Stone needs to move their students' like office to the top floor, put their exit door out off the skyscraper, and let them all just fall. Because you can do a better job with a bunch of untrained monkeys than who's in that thing. Like, oh, let's be edgy and get people talking. Blah, blah, blah. No slash in the top 100. Morons. Yeah. Eric, I love that five. Love- Go ahead. Oh, no. Sorry. Eric Clapton at 35, I think, is understandable. Like, I personally adore him. But from a musician's perspective, he kind of just oh. stays in one one style. So oh, is he, one is, style, he worse, really good. is he worse than all the top 10? Well, let's. I got I to gotta look now. But Yeah, you know, look at the top 10 and tell me if you know. Brooklyn, by just name recognition alone, if you know the, some of these people. As much yeah. as I love Joni Mitchell, and I love Joni Mitchell. She is not the ninth greatest guitarist of all time. No, no one says you know who really reinvented uh, the guitar. No. Joni Mitchell. Shut up. <laughs> front uh, front women or front women are just or like vocalists, absolutely, but guitar players, no. Right. No. So while Brooklyn's looking this, up, that's like if we did top. That's like putting top singer. This list is like putting top singers, and for fifteen, for good thing is uh, Axl Rose, like. <laughs> you just want to get people yelling and mad. Like, get out of here. Oh, best face paint in bands and kisses at 65. Um, like, what? Okay. No, 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 no. Sorry. Right off the top, Andy Summers at 250 is a disgrace. He's at yeah, least top 100. From the police. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For every breath you take alone. Um, sir, no. That's an chi- entirely white band, and we will never include all of them because we have to be edgy <laughs> and woke. Shut up. Get out of here. Chuck Berry, sure, I get that one. But, like, Joni I, Mitchell, I'm sorry. Know? That was another one. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I don't know guitarists, but I, if I know a guitarist's name, that means they've climbed to a certain level. Like, right. Jimi Hendrix, of course. If it, Jimi Hendrix wasn't one, it makes no sense. But overall, your whole list doesn't make sense because you guys are more. They also rank Disney song, which that list should also be executed. We should just do a tier list. A tier list Coho works for that. Coho works for that company. You can't convince me otherwise. Or his <laughs> doppelganger works there because that's the only way. Because that's him in 2019 making lists. It's, it's just Coho with a fake um, mustache. Okay, Lindsey Buckingham at one ten is is pretty all right. Oh shit, sure. we're talking about one. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna get to that probably it, in like another video. Let's it takes let's for, talk it's about just, it's taking forever to learn. We got twenty one songs. To yeah, get through tonight, we've got so. spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, so right. basically, Cody has um, how many vetoes now? It's still four vetoes and three switcheroos. Yeah, four vetoes, three switcheroos. I still have my veto. Um, so there's a chance that, uh, anything can happen, essentially. Uh, we are now in the section where it's Brooklyn and Mines list combined. So let's see where the math checks out and see what song is at 150. Space Oddity by David Bowie. Uh, Brooklyn, you had this one a little higher than me. You can go first on this. 
Um, I just I like the how the music arrangement goes with with the story, like especially on that first time when he's when he's kind of counting down. I think it does a really good job of uh, building building up to the chorus, uh, and then just kind of the harmony that that he that he does with it. Um, something I noticed around this time in the listen, it might even be from the, written from the perspective of uh, of two people. Um, that are in in the spaceship because there's certain lines where it's like, especially if you're listening to it on headphones, you can hear it on the left side, and then like one of the other lines comes from the other side. So it's like, oh, like I wonder if that's kind of some something, something that's happening. But then you get this like this big kind of acoustic riff, and I think that's a, that does a good job of emoting like, oh, like we finally touched down. Like this is it's this unexplored, unexplored area, the kind of a big adrenaline rush, and then it kind of sets back in to kind of uh, evoke like the fear of like, oh, well, like, we're, we're also, we don't know where we are. We don't know what could happen. Um, and uh, so I just kind of love the storytelling aspect of this song because at the end, you don't, you don't kind of know if Major Tom actually lets himself go or if something goes wrong and he starts drifting out into space. Um, another thing that I actually, like, really love about this song is the fact that David Bowie is using two different voices for Major Tom and for Ground Control. For Major Tom, he's using his chest voice, but for Ground Control, he's using his head voice. So there's a, like an in, like a, a difference in slight in, uh, inflection for Major Tom, um, all right, for uh, for Ground Control, and I really like that dynamic. It just kind of like really enhances the story. Uh, and like that ending as like major Tom is obviously like drifting out into the depths of space. Uh, it just like really captures that like anxiety kind of like fear of drifting off into nothingness. I think it's just like a really well crafted storytelling song. Uh, but let's go to Cody. And uh, we, we, we know that you've talked about David Bowie being like the Wes Anderson of rock and roll. Uh, how does that hold for you here? This is this is a hundred. This is the exact definition of David Bowie being Wes Anderson. It's like I kind of figured this was the it. subject matter of his song, like the design and everything, is correct. It's weird. It's peculiar. He even uses that word in the song. It's like all out there and stuff. But like the substance of the song, I don't care. Like, you know, it's like ground control. I've heard that. Like I'm stepping through the door like you know i've heard that numerous times i don't know where but like it's been used the uh, i think the arrangement of this song works really well like if you like that in songs me <laughs> don't care um but it's like the set design um but overall i just don't love this song like i believe he has done enough the same reason for wes anderson wes anderson isn't for me i know he's not for me that's the whole reason he's not for me but I can't ar can't deny what he's done for movies. Like he has a subgenre, he has a group that adores what he does because they appreciate that type of storytelling and type of music. Same thing with David Bowie. I can't tell you David Bowie's a bad artist. He just ain't my artist. You know. Okay. So I think yeah. there's people that look at paintings and be like, the other people are like that's art, and the other people goes. That's a lot of color. Like I don't know, but don't look already to me. This is this for me. Like something like a Jackson at, Pollock or a Mark Roth. Yeah, guy. yeah. You know the melting stuff. Like I don't give a damn. But like I bet also in like this time frame, if you took a little bit of acid and listened to David Bowie, you were having a hell of a good time. <laughs> Either not, that or like not nightmare. endorsing it. Don't go find acid. I'm just saying if you did it during the song, I bet you'd have fun. Because you'd be calling ground control too. So yeah. All right. So let's move on to number one forty nine, Maybelline by Chuck Berry. Uh, I'm gonna start us off with this one. Uh, that chorus fucking slaps. Um, and um, Chuck Berry's Chuck Berry. Um, you, you, yeah, you know what? I'm not feeling this one anymore. That's called a veto. Yeah, I'm replacing this with Right Down the Line by Jerry Rafferty. Um, 
my my problem with me with Maybelline now is that I think I've gotten so wrapped up in how good that chorus is. I cannot like ever remember anything else outside of that. Like I don't remember like the le- any of the lyrics. I don't remember like the melody of the lyrics because it's just kind of so scattershot. That guitar solo is okay. Uh, Chuck Berry's done much better guitar solos. Um, in fact, there's going to be a song by Chuck Berry coming up in the future that I think is a much better example of that. Um, whereas with Right Down the Line by Jerry Rafferty, this song is, I only discovered it recently. And it's one of those songs, like Cody had mentioned this before, where sometimes you hear a song and just immediately right away, like you you get it, you connect with it, you understand it. Um, and that's what this one was for me. That guitar, that guitar is so great. Um, the lyrics of this song are just like, they're simple, but they're so deeply personal that you can't help but to like really understand the romanticism behind them. And the other thing that I think really carries the song over the top is the organ and the bass. The two of those instruments combined create this like luscious, like pillowy, like cloudy effect that is just incredible to listen to. Like sonically, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, I know Brooklyn has had a more of a chance to listen to this one as well. Uh, what do you are you okay with this being my veto and the song I picked? I'm okay with this being your veto, but it's weird because like Maybelline, you had the argu- you brought up the argument of like that chorus is really good, but I don't really remember much about the verses. I kind of have the same thing with this. I think the chorus is incredible, and it's the reason why it's top 500 worthy. Um, I just think outside of like the baseline. You really have to like dig dig in, into the lyrics, and it is it is a really good really good like relatable story. It's a, like about this about this woman kind of like being like being this kind of constant for the, for this guy who's kind of been been through some stuff, and it's like like the, I think the line it's been like um like you've been as constant as a northern star the brightest light that shines it's been you woman and like that's where the right down the line references because like you see you see you see that and then you just kind of follow it straight through, but that chorus in particular is just incredible the amount of harmony that they're able to get on it the nice little piano um doesn't really doesn't really overstay it's it's welcome um but yeah uh i think the baseline is doing some really cool things like it has some nice kind of like sharp moments but then it has like it just knows when to hold hold certain notes um 149 is going to be high i wish we had like if there was an option of like kind of putting this to the bottom it would only be one song but like it only it only replace uh, space oddity but um but yeah i think of the songs that we're talking about today it would be yeah it's still a good song but mm. all right cody uh i want to hear your opinion on this one because you saw earlier that there were 21 songs on this playlist and uh this is your reason why so tell me you could have said him hey, vetoing one <laughs> but then, but then we, don't get, we don't get the reaction are you going to save me some time? This is a weird choice overall. Okay. Um, I think Maybelline is very of the time. And, like, I can be – I could understand when they didn't have television or they didn't have fun things to do and being, like, in a club and this song, and they, like, do the little dance with each other. Fine. Listening to it now, sure, probably doesn't need to be, like – he needs to be revered. This song yeah. didn't travel the times with it. But what a weird veto overall. Like, over because this song sucks. Like, if I'm being real honest with you, like, right down the line doesn't do anything inventive for me to, like, love the song. Like, to say, this is Maybelline. No, this song needs a place. So I just don't get the, again, never really heard the song prior. So that's also what I was going to. But, like, each week, I, like, I rank, I try to rank the songs from like best to worst, like my eyes. This song is lower near the bottom for me of this week. And I think this week is like, this week is a playlist that I would just regularly listen to. Like, there's some great songs on this. This one is just, I was like, I think it's just a misuse of a veto, if I'm being honest. Well, I think, I think, I think, I think the song Maybelline or vice versa. Huh? Was this higher or lower than Maybelline in your ranking? Maybelline's higher. Okay. Because Maybelline's at least a little fun. This is a little just not a lot of 
oomph for me, I guess, is the best way I can go. Like, nothing to carry home. I don't, again, and I'm not one. You said the guitar. I'm like, I guess. Not that I love. Um, the song, I the song, I agree. It can it can be vetoed. I was I guess I think I had it at like one oh one sixty two. Yeah, and I and I was like yeah, like it's that's fine. Um, but Andrew had sent me three three songs, this one and then two others, and there was another one that I was like, I think it's a tie between those two as to like which one you could could pick. The other one I'm assuming is "Turn the Page" by Bob Seger. Uh, no, the the uh, the other one, the uh, oh, me and Mrs. Jones. Oh, me and oh, for some reason I thought you had the game. Never mind. No, no, hold on. The fact that that song and turn the page, and then you settled on this, wrong. (laughs) Well, you still have three. You still have three vetoes. You still have three. I know, but I I can't veto your veto. I don't think that's how this works. But no, my. But you can save those songs for later. But I know. But if you had the you you picked. I don't know how you listen to all three of those songs and then you say, you know what, right down the line. I think this is one of those songs where, like, if you hear it, like... Never mind. Who's your favorite singer again? Peter Gabriel. That checks out. No, that checks out. Never mind. That's how you listen to those three songs and say this song. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's just move on. <laughs> this bar over there. Uh, let's move on to number 148 on our list. Now that Brooklyn and I don't have a veto anymore. Ooh la la by Faces. Uh, Brooklyn, you have this one lower. I can already see Cody. By about two, but 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 like the two hundred spot separation, I think is 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 what's is what's getting me because this is in the same vein as Dreams, where it's just using two chords, and that's and that's all you need to get to get that emotion. Um, Rod Stewart is doing an incredible job. Um, it's a very catchy chorus. Um, very easy to sing along with. And then like the opening lyrics of like poor old granddad. I laughed at all his words. Um, I think there's at the, the, he kind of, he kind of jumps around with the rhythm a little bit to kind of, kind of fit in words uh, with the story. Um, I think when he talked about it on 500 stones, um, that piano, just like the old timey sound similar to, similar to hurt when we were talking a few, a few episodes, just the, just the right kind of, uh, Right kind of effect with it um but yeah it's a great like great campfire song um play it at a bar and it's it, you're gonna get a big a big pop um this is one of the first songs that i remember listening to i think i was like four when i when i first heard it um and it's just gonna stay with me um i think that the band made a really really smart choice by not having rod stewart sing this one and having ronnie wood sing this one. Oh, because shit. Well, I mean, Rod Stewart does sing on it. He's like one of the supporting yeah. vocalists. Um, but I think I think that was such a smart choice because there's 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 a warmth and a and like a color in Ronnie Wood's voice that I think suits this style a little bit better than Rod Stewart's did. Um, there's just like a jauntiness to this song that just really works well. And I think the thing that anchored like puts the perfect bow on this song and like makes it as good as it is is that piano that like ragtime kind of piano that's like slapped right in the middle of the song it gives it such like a warmth that is just so infectious um yeah and it's just like a very it's another one of those like simple songs um but it's one that everyone can like really sing along to uh Cody, I saw you drop your head once this song was mentioned. So uh, let's talk about this. Well, one thing, like, I believe this may be unpopular, but I believe Rod Stewart, like, covering songs and doing songs is, like, like, I like his versions a lot of choices overall. I love his voice. I love his presentation. This is one song that's not the superior version of it. Like, I like Rod Stewart alone. I think he's good. But be fair with you, the reason I dropped my head is because I've never, if you would have given me a thousand dollars on the line, name the title of I Wish I Knew, <laughs> like, <laughs> this, not a chance would I have thought Ooh La La was the name of this song. I know, now, right? So when I saw it come up, or I said, play the playlist, and it comes across, I'm like, yeah, and I was like, yeah, the beginning, I don't really, and then it came out, I'm like, this is the title? That's why I dropped my head. 
song's really good. I love the song a lot. I it, I think it's been used a lot in like movies and TVs and stuff like that. It's Rushmore like, in particular, which not a good idea. Well, no offense, Rushmore sucks. Um, Wes Anderson sucks. But um, this is just one that is like again. There are certain songs that just get better with age, and the older you get. The resonation that I wish I knew, like it works. So, yeah, I think it's really good. I love how it's like it starts a little weird. I would consider. I I think we thought that was. It doesn't like get into where I want, it. and then it, as the song goes, it's good. It's not a very long song either. So it's like no, it's like two and, and a half, two yeah. forty five, something um, like that. If I had to rank overall titles of like artist on the show, faces would be like in the bottom, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not one of I my like favorites. That. I don't like that name at all. Come out, faces. No, 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 thank you. So, but overall, yeah, definitely deserving of the list. Uh, all right, so let's move on That's to number one. Gap, you two. That's weird. Oh, get ready. Here's a bigger one for you. Oh, yeah. Ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't have by Buzzcocks? Uh, you know what? This makes perfect sense for one of you. Just saying. Uh, so I have this one lower. I have this at 88. Um, the energy and the drive in this fucking song, it's so good. And it's another short one, so it doesn't completely overstay its welcome. Um, and I just love the punch and the voice and the vocals of this. Um, something that I thought was really smart, and Bill brought this up on his episode of Set List, is that I'm blanking on the lead singer's name. I forgot to like put that in my notes. Um, Googler. Yeah. But they were bisexual. So all of the pronouns in this are sung in a way that like you can either sing this to a, or about a man or a woman or like whoever like you want. Like I thought that's just like a really smart like little thing in the songwriting there. Um <laughs> But it's really, it's that instrumentation. It's incredible. The guitars just like crunch and drive. Those drums are fucking perfect. The drumming uh, of this is just incredible. Pete Shelley. Pete Shelley, thank you. Um, and Pete Shelley's vocals on this are, it, it's got just the right amount of snottiness uh, for a punk song like this. Um, so I, I, I just love this song. It's like an incredible piece when you're driving. Um, I've done it at karaoke and it just, it, it's amazing there. This is one of my all time favorite songs. Uh, yeah, I, I have this too low. I don't, not sure quite what I, what I was thinking. I think I, I remember whenever this came up on 500 stones, I had initially kind of compared it to, to police. Um, but I, but like having time to stew on it, um, and also learning that Billy Talent, uh, Bannon talked about uh, earlier on the show, uh, they they've since they since covered the song. Um, it's a it's a punk essential, um, especially when you get that like that that like he, he, not heavy effect, but the like the long notes of the guitar, and then you just the booming of the drums going on in between that. But then on the inverse, you get the chorus, and it's just it's really like effective strumming that like initially it can come off as money, but then whenever you go back to it, it's just really effective kind of like triple triple strum um, that is you that when used when used sparingly it can be can be done done really well. Um, yeah, I would probably have this in like the top, in, definitely in the top three hundred uh, for sure. Um, and it, I like the kind of the, the, the dichotomy of it because initially it's like, oh, like um, you initially think it's about somebody falling in love, but then it's also kind of like a like like I, kind of like, like the song says, like like loving loving the wrong person and kind of how how that how that eats at you at times. But yeah. Uh, Cody, what are your thoughts on ever falling in love with someone you shouldn't have? Listen, <laughs> if I had money on the line, I could have guaranteed who put this on very high on their list, and it's you, Andrew Barr. Um, I think this is a fine song, personally. I don't think it's a bad song. I just think it fits into, like, a certain, like, I don't know. Like it's, I don't. I don't mean this disrespectfully. I promise. But it comes off cheesy. I'll take it Just, that way. It comes off cheesy, and like it comes off as that like, 
I don't know. I feel the same way, and this may be sacrilege. I, again, I don't know how you guys fit on certain artists, but I feel like a very like Tom Jones kind of vibe when the song plays. Oh, like, ew! They would they would stab you for saying that. Like it just feels like of that time. Like the I don't know. Like the I don't. It just I don't think Tom Jones is bad. I like Tom Jones first and personally, but like that's the vibe. Right, I but this is like the thread is like these are like the, like the leaders of punk. These are like one of the earliest punk groups. So they would have hated the fact that you compared them to Tom Jones. It is what it is. I'm of the people. Yeah, the so the 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 people pussy got. What's new pussy got? Ever fallen in love with a what's new pussy? <laughs> yeah, so overall, not in love with it. So mm, you Didn't fall Sorry, in love buddy. with something that you shouldn't have. Got it. Uh, yeah. All right. We're in love with the right one, I guess. I don't know that. <laughs> that's that's your be all end all cure for this. If you have to choose, choose the right one. <laughs> all right. Uh, Did you say this is considered punk? Like, what are we yeah, talking? Yeah, this is this yes. is like they came out like the they and the Sex Pistols were in like the same group. Like um, Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco, like that post-hardcore, I guess, genre of punk in particular, is heavily influenced by this. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to be real honest with you. I apologize for everything I just said. Because <laughs> while you were listening, I clicked the wrong song. We'll talk about what my feelings are. <laughs> That's why none of this made sense to me. How you guys oh. are talking and stuff. I clicked the wrong thing, so we'll get to mine in the list. What do you? Oh I no! Oh, I don't know why no. I made the mistake either. It makes no sense why I made the mistake, but I made the mistake. I know this song exactly. was fine. This song oh. was completely fine and completely passable. I clicked things that were in parentheses. I didn't cl- look at what the title was. So <laughs> yeah, you know, okay, I, I know which I know which one he did. Yeah, you understand the Tom Jones of that song. A little Over. bit more, <laughs> yes. This one makes no sense. Like Tom Jones's. The funny thing is, that group is also considered punk. No. Yes. What? So, moving on to number 146. Listen, we're off the rails. <laughs> Hound Dog by Big Mama Thornton. Uh, Brooklyn is going to go first. Uh, we don't get Robert Plant without Big Mama Thornton, um, and we don't no. get El- we don't get Elvis uh, without without Big Mama Thornton. I think it's just kind of a nice combination uh, of, of the two. Um, just the like the wail that she has in her in her lyrics, and I believe she's actually in like she's in the top ten guitarists of all time, and this is kind of kind of one of the reasons. Just uh, one of that's the- that's Sister Rosetta Tharp. Oh, sister Rosetta Thornton, sorry. Um, but just one of like one of the pillars of blues, um, and just how that guitar kind of plays after she finishes a line. Um, yeah, it's been talked about to death. I think uh like two hundreds, I think is the I think it's the I- ideal kind of spot. Like, I think if we're doing this earlier, it probably gets probably gets a little, little bit higher. I can't see it getting below like like I can't see it getting below 300. Um, I think it'll just, I think it'll just always stay there as like we were talking about with ever fallen in love, just one of the rock essentials. So we, as a culture, apologize to you, big mama Thornton. We let the Elvis version of this song become a giant hit. That version compared to this version is kind of garbage. Um, because it's like, well, the, well, that well, that other version just relies so much on piano and it makes it more of like a swing and, time than it is like a blues song and two verses and they like water that and they like water it down like so much. Um, Big Mama Thornton on this song, like her vocals are they're they're. They're commanding. Like, the way that she sings commands your attention. Uh, and just, like, the way that she plays off of the band is just, like, such a really, like, tight piece. Um, I I don't think I would ever put it anywhere above, like, 275. But it's still a really well-crafted song. And it, it's better than the Elvis version, people. I'm not shitting on Elvis 
but like that version of the song, when you compare it to this, I think it doesn't hold a candle. Obviously, I think Cody's disagreeing with me because I see him just like chewing his nails, like shaking his head, rolling his eyes. No, no, listen, listen. Both things can be right, okay? I do not stand for Elvis slander. I will never stand for Elvis, Elvis slander. I think he was absolutely fantastic at what he did. Yeah. Um, I think these are just two total. They have the same title. They have the same lyrics. They are not the same song. They're just not. Mm -hmm. They're just two different. They're two different sides. Of the, they're. The, it's like a, if a song gets sped up or slowed down. In my opinion, both can be good. It just depends on what version you want. I would love a robust like like voice to sing this song. This song, one Hound Dog never made sense from an Elvis perspective. Besides exactly. the song being good, because like you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Who the hell are you talking to? Like her singing it, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Has a lot more like of that time frame. Like you're a hound dog. Like then the the robust voice that she carries through it is good. I just hate like this is the comparison always between this and that. This is this version of Elvis song. They are literally apples and oranges. They are not even in the same ballpark between each other. Both are good. This song definitely can be higher up if you're in the mood for that on a certain day, or you can be in the mood for Hound Dog. Again, the man shook his pelvic region at a bunch of people and made them lose their minds. Okay, he swept the nation. No one else was shaking their pelvis. So maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe if Big Mama Thornton shook her pelvis, maybe oh oh she people, oh she did. If you ever watch videos of her, her. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just saying, shake your pelvis. If you <laughs> want attention out there, go out and shake your pelvis. As uh, one Nelly said, shake your tail feather. Mm. Him, Diddy, and Murphy Lee. <laughs> I'm so Damn. shocked that you were able to pull Murphy Lee. Bad Boys <laughs> Two, the soundtrack. I could probably sing every lyric oh, man. of that song. Murph, right Murphy Lee was in everything in a in like two thousands rap. Like what if you Diddy? needed a feature, like, just like featuring bad boys, got to be in there somewhere. Diddy, never do anything else. <laughs> Insanely young Cody, like two thousand four. No greater song than "Shake a Tail Feather" by that group. And who? Oh, listen to it now. <laughs> I might use one of my vetoes to put it on this list. Look, look. I swear to God, if you do, we're shutting this show down. Peter Gabriel, Al, Murphy Lee is. I swear to God, I will. Grills cut. from Nelly. Let's go. I will okay. cut wires. Uh, all right. <laughs> Moving on to number 145 before I lose my goddamn mind. Dream On by Aerosmith. Uh, I have this one lower. Um. First of all, Steven Tyler on this song has... I don't think I've ever heard another Aerosmith song where Steven Tyler sounds like this. Like, I think Steven Tyler is a very good vocalist, but this one, for some reason, it just sounds better. Um, I think it's sober. Well, that's also probably the case. Um, I, was, I was just going to go into a song like, There was a time before cocaine. <laughs> um... But that guitar line is just perfect to build up the tension. Even just that little... Like Jimmy Page-esque kind of uh, moment right there for Joe Perry. Also not in the 100 for Rolling Stone's greatest guitarist of all time for some fucking reason. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that build. The build of this fucking song kicks so much ass. Especially the grand point where like Steven Tyler just hits that fucking ceiling note and just so many people have tried to do that and still sound good. And I don't think I've ever heard a single person hit that note the way that Steven Tyler does in this song. Like there, it is unmatchable. Uh yeah, it's just an utterly fantastic piece. There's one person that has come like really close. It was Neil Patrick Harris in Glee. Him and uh, him and Matthew Morrison uh, duet duet this. I think as as like rival teachers or something, but they yes. like they're clashing clashing heads. Yeah, um, I remember but no, I agree episode. with you. The, I I agree with you. The build up like this is an underrated riff 
given how much we love Stairway to Heaven, it's kind of doing the same things, but it's not as like like if you were to go if you were to go on a guitar and try to like sound it out, you would have you would have a difficult time as opposed to Stairway to Heaven. Um, but I like my favorite line in this song is is when it's like. Um, Half um, half my life's in, in books, written pages, live and learn from fools and from sages. And then uh, you get like, you know, it's true. And then he really ramps it up. It's like all the feelings come back to you. And it's I think that's a kind of a nice kind of like halfway point to, to to the end where he really is just giving it out. And then like that, the kind of that patented Steven Tyler voice that we that we come to know. Um, I think everybody really gets a chance, chance to shine here. Um especially like you get to like dream until your dream comes true. And then um trying to remember the bass player's name. I'm going to Google it right quick. Um, and then the, like the, the drummer as well, gets a oh. chance, chance to sign in that moment. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's one of the, it's, I think it's the first Aerosmith song. And I think like, that's, that's why, that's why it sounds so different from everything else. Um, but yeah, this is one that needs, needs to stay on here. Cody, I feel like this one's up your alley. Oh yeah, this song. You again? You find somebody that doesn't enjoy this song? I don't want to be around them. Um, personally, uh, this song is absolutely in fire. Um, I can't tell you how many times the start of the song has made me, if I didn't click play, almost you had one shot, one opportunity. I confuse them all the time when they both start. This is the this is directly the beginning of lose yourself from Eminem. Um, it's not. It's literally dream on, and it gets me every time. That squeal at the end, I've hurt my voice numerous times, including this week. I'm attempting it, not around people, because I'm not a psychopath, but I've definitely done it. Um, had a lot of fun doing it. And he's just like the song. This is like one of those songs that just doesn't feel like Aerosmith to me every time it plays, like. Aerosmith is like the goofy, like goofy band out there, and like this song is mm-hmm. like real, like heart, real depth to it. Just the build in it, the lyrics, like not saying like I love Aerosmith. I think Aerosmith is like one of the greatest bands out there, but of that time frame. But like this song is just like, wow, they really did dream on. Like, and like, he wrote this, they, I think, when he was fourteen. Yeah. Oh shit. It, and then to watch them, like when he has that mic stand and just like squeak, like going into the, th- it's those, and he's just whoever the guitarist is just like completely Joe going Perry. up. Joe yeah, it's Perry. just um, perfect stage live moment. Yeah, uh, Joey Kramer on drums and then Tom Hamilton uh, on on the bass as well. Just wanted to shout shout them out. Incredible, incredible craftsman. Again, I'm not a I'm not a vocalist by any means. I'm a great car vocalist, but I couldn't imagine being a vocalist. I'm like, you have to like dread this song if it's like in the set. I would, but like, it's gonna, like, you're gonna have to just, you can't not have it because this is the one moment like everybody expects you to hundred percent nail. It. I also think it's like the riskiest song for somebody to, like try to cover and like do because. I remember seeing someone try to cover this one time oh. on American Idol, and it did not go well. Like, it's literally watching a bomb go off on something. You're just like, oh, God, this is going to be really bad. Because if they hit it, you're like, dang. If they miss it, you're like, oh, you should have done that. Why? I think the only other one that you can add to that conversation is How Do I Get You Alone uh, by Bonnie Taylor. Or Bonnie Tyler, rather. Yeah, it's just like. You songs that have those giant moments, you can't miss those moments. Like you just mm-hmm. can't. And if you do, it's I it's like watching it's like watching a stadium collapse. Oh yeah, it's like watching a terrible like when an umpire makes a terrible call and the whole stadium <laughs> knows, and then you have seventy thousand people yelling at you. You just feel like you want to die on the ends. It doesn't matter if that bar's got twenty people in it. You're one of the twenty, and you miss that note. We're all like. How do you, to, a, go, you to go to go on more your back, get them next time. Oh, oh. To go on more with the baseball metaphor, if someone tries to hit that note and they just completely bum it, it's like the Steve Bartman from the Chicago Cubs. Someone's just yanking that home run away from them. It's like hitting a home run bat flipping, but it's a pop fly to the by to the right field. Like it didn't go anywhere, but you're like, let's go, and you turn and you're out. Like, <laughs> 
or it's off to the wall and you're getting tagged at second. Like, no, what? And he's like, thought I had it, didn't have it. Because you start building, you're like, I got this, I got it. No, that you're out. Like, <laughs> you're gone. All right, uh, join us. Hat and gets called out on the strikes. Oh, terrible. Uh, join us for music's off the wall. Uh, <laughs> coming to you soon. All right, let's move on to number 144. When a Man Loves a Woman by Percy Sledge. Uh, I have this lower. Um, I There is so much emotion packed into this song. <laughs> and Cody is just... 44? Whoa! Oh, shit. Okay. I thought this was going to go the opposite way. Um, this is one of the most heartbreaking songs of all time to me. Because you from the way that Percy Sledge is just filling his vocals with yearning. And when you listen to the lyrics, he's putting everything in like a past tense. And you get to the bridge and he goes, well, this man loved this woman. I gave you everything I had. Um, Baby, please don't treat me bad. You can tell that he is in the middle of getting dumped after putting all of his heart on the line like to the point where he has been like distancing himself from friends and like with spending all of his money on her and he has put so much of his heart on the line and he is in the middle of getting thrown to the curb like there is so much heartbreak in this song and it is captured perfectly by Percy Sledge's vocals, in my opinion, one of the best vocal performances of a song of all time. Um, yeah, I remember discovering this um, on like, I think this was on the 2010 list that had gotten gotten cut off and it's like, yeah, yeah this shouldn't have gotten cut off. Um, if you're not familiar with Percy Sledge, imagine if, um, if, like, if Otis Redding is here and uh, Charles Bradley is here, if you're not familiar with Charles Bradley, uh, he did the cover of uh, Changes for the Big Mouth uh, theme song. And also has another song, Ain't It a Sin, which is a top 500 song. Anyways, if you put Otis Redding here and Charles Bradley here, Percy Sledge is kind of right in the middle. He has that same kind of Otis Redding, Otis Redding feel and kind of kind of delivery. Um, but it's just it's it's consistent enough where it you're not going like all over the place somewhere like steven tyler who we were talking about earlier um i think the horns in this are are used used effectively um and just the tension that is given in like those in those last lines um especially whenever the one of the backing vocals come in and i think it's like baby baby please don't don't treat me bad and that's when it just like it just turns around and it's 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 cool it's uh like it's Similar to one and you two, where you could initially perceive it as a love song, but then you take it a steep dive. And like Andrew was saying, it it absolutely is a breakup song, and and it's just it's sad. And you need you need these songs because man, breakups fucking suck. The amount of times I've heard people say this was played at my wedding really confuses me. Uh, (laughs) But Cody. Uh, what do you think about this song? God, people are so stupid about that. Like, <laughs> like you know, listen to the flipping lyrics, like, bro, like, well, no, like, think about this, like, uh, everybody that sings, um, oh, what's the Stevie Wonder song? Oh, um, not, uh, you are the sunshine lovely. of my life. Oh, isn't she lovely? That one. Talking about a baby. Yeah. <laughs> baby. Your your girlfriend ain't a baby, and if it is, you're going to jail. Like yeah. you're done, buddy. Like I'm not singing, but like anybody that you can do the beginning parts, but less than one minute old is literally in the first twenty seconds of the song. If I don't, don't hear halfway through, then like something's wrong. If I'm at a wedding and I hear this song come on, I'm like, oh god, this fucking wedding's doomed. Like I hope we didn't spend a lot of money on the dress. Like um, this one, I will always love you. Like, like no. Oh, what? What are you doing? This song is absolutely beautiful. Like, 
like heartbreaking, but like a beautiful like song and how it's constructed and how it's sang and the emotion that is like di dictated by his voice, just singing it out. Like it is so much of that, like the feelings going through a breakup and like that emotion, like when a man loves a woman, like it's there, it's clear as black and white. If you don't listen to it, it's just, I just, I love singing this in the car. Like it's, I, I am, you at 44 makes perfect sense, but I'm also the similar, similar way. Like I love like a good breakup song or like a good, like, that's why like, I'm a sucker for a rom-com. Like I will go to, you put a good rom-com on that's got emotional elements to it. I'm fully on board. This is one of the same ones, like such a powerful song. And his voice carries you through because it's very like, it has the same feel throughout the entire song, but the words that are changing adds more and more to it. So good choice. Great choice. Big gap, though. That's crazy. And again, if we were doing that game, uh, and point for Andrew. But he didn't want to do this earlier. Nope. <laughs> because there are too many songs that are really close, oh, such okay. as Then You Would Pass. One Way or Another by Blondie. Brooklyn gets to go first. Oh, man. Uh, if you ever played Guitar Hero World Tour, you've definitely heard heard this song. Uh, I think it's in like middle middle part of the game. Um, but that guitar lick is just it's so great. Um, similar to Ooh La La and and Dreams, m mainly relies on on two chords. Um, lyrically, though, it's kind of like on the on the other side of every every breath you take. Yes, it's the it's the creepy like. Every Breath You Take is the creepy breakup song. This is the creepy, like, oh, I'm in, like, I'm in love. Um, I guess somewhere to, like, uh, oh, what's the Prince song we were talking about earlier? Kiss? No, not Kiss. Um, oh, no, Raspberry Beret. Where, like, Prince is like, oh, I'm falling in love. Let's make it pretty. Um, Debbie Harris is like, oh, I'm falling in love. And, like, we're, we're going to get, like, big, like, big eye. And we're going to follow you. Like, like one of the one of the lines, like I'll like or the, the kind of the pre-chorus, I guess, I'll drive past your house and if the lights are all down, I'll see you, I'll see who's around. Like fucking yikes. Um but some of her uh some of her delivery in this, I like uh I'm trying to find it here. Like I'm gonna get um the, in particular, it's like I'm gonna gonna give you the slip, the slip of a hip or or another, like that line in particular. Um I would love to hear the song live just because of the studio version, how it ends, it just kind of fades out. I would love to see how they how they end it live because you could do that ending for probably about 10 minutes and oh, yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't get tiring. And then like the siren-esque kind of sound from the keys, um, I think is really good. Um I think we've said it multiple times on the show before. Parallel lines, unreal album. You need to go check it out. Um, but yeah, Andrew. Yeah, so this song was written after Debbie Harry had to deal with some actual stalkers. Um, okay, oh yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yep, yep. So you're abs you absolutely nailed the the parallel to every breath you take right there. Uh, even like even talking about how like it's the darker side of that. Um, the band is in fucking credible on this song. Everybody is driving at like 110 miles an hour on this, and it is just so it's still so like tightly composed. Um, one thing I really like about this song that I had never noticed before re-listening to it this past week is that on that pre-chorus, like in the back of the mix, you can hear a really deep bassy voice singing alongside her giving it that really ominous undertone and that really dark edge to it that is just an absolutely incredible touch that I wish I had noticed before then. Um, and then, yeah, Debbie Harry. Debbie Harry, Debbie Harry, Debbie Harry, Harry, Debbie Harry, one of the greatest vocalists in rock history, in my opinion. Not just women in rock history, rock history. Um yeah, she's just an absolutely incredible vocalist, and I love her to death. I love Blondie. I have, like, a bunch of their albums on vinyl in the back over here. Um, yeah, One Way or Another is one of the best songs ever made. Uh, Cody, do you like this song, or uh, do you not care about it one way or another? I see what you're trying to do there. I failed the <laughs> and, I, and I fell at the track. I fell at the track. Um, overrated. 
the oh. best way I can describe it. This song is just meh at this point. Like, Did the Rugrats I cover get... ruin this for you? <laughs> that didn't help, I'll be honest with you. But it's the... It's just like the like it's repetitive. I've heard it all my life at this point. I think it's fine. I will catch myself like get you, get you, get you, get, like I, you get along with it and you'll sing along. But overall, I don't think it like a popularity. Sure, two fifty best song. I, could. I if you told me I never listen to one way or another, I think I'm going to be okay. That's how I take it. Well, luckily, and he talked another... more passionately about this at 250 than he talked about a song at 44. I just want that on the record right now. So maybe numbers mean nothing to Andrew, but I would give Andrew also the point on this one because he put a 250, which is closer to where it happened. So if we uh, ever did that, sorry, Bar. I wouldn't have been winning. I like this would have been the episode I. That's would why have you won. didn't want it. But I wouldn't have won overall from everything we've done so far. <laughs> All right. Uh, fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Uh, all right, moving on to number 142 before Brooklyn shoots me in the face. Stupid cat. <laughs> American Girl by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Brooklyn, once again, has the slower. So this is kind of a weird spot because I wouldn't say that this is my favorite Tom Petty song. I think I still lean towards, like, Mary Jane's Last Dance, um, Running Down a Dream, um, but this is a, this is objectively his best song. Um, just the, the how they amp you up in the in the intro, where it's just like just that one chord on the guitar, and then the bass is doing like this really cool kind of kind of counter melody, um, and then Tom Petty's like he's been known to have this kind of soft soft kind of voice, and it just it just works works for the song. Um, also, the guitar solo at the end of this does not need to be there it has no justice being there but it at but it's it's incredible like it'd be like adding in like a through the fire and flame solo to like this kind of like easy listen rock song theoretically doesn't make sense but am i there for it every time absolutely um but just like like the chorus as well um like the kind of the call and answer of like, oh yeah, all right, make it easy, baby. Like make it last all night, and then kind of the, the kind of the echo of it of it as well. Um, and then yeah, I'm surprised because it's 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 a it's American. Um, but I've also but like whenever he whenever he died, I know I went into like a big kind of deep dive of, of Tom Petty and really got to kind of appreciate his sound. Yeah, he's one of the few people that when he died, I, I remember exactly where I was at. Um, yeah, this song, um, it's, I, I honestly think it's that guitar solo that does it for me. Um, I, I genuinely think that that's the thing that brings the song together as a whole for me at the end. Um, Tom Petty, just like, Tom Petty was a songwriter who kind of understood what people wanted in the song um it would be sort of like a short verse and then you go immediately straight into the chorus like he knew like that chorus is what people came to hear and he ma always made that like the center point and this song in particular follows that to a t uh because that chorus is instantly catchy and instantly memorable and it's so sharp and cutting um but yeah, no, this has just got like a great energy to it and it keeps you in you know, it keeps you going throughout the entire thing, adding little things here and there to keep the ears like interested in listening to it. It's I would probably agree with you that it's probably not my favorite Tom Petty song, but it is arguably his best. Hmm. Uh and I feel like Cody I would feel like would be a Tom Petty fan um, i got i gotta imagine yeah exactly so what are your thoughts on this i'm anti-florida gators but that's about it like <laughs> they ruined i won't back down because that team backs down every week but <laughs> um what a terrible song like that's a co of trivia like i won't back down yeah you will you'll lose here uh, but, besides, <laughs> but chris um, but chris weidman though against anderson silva like a great all-time uh, ufc moment um, yeah, it's got a good point to it, but overall, like American Girl, like fantastic, like song, like overall, like constructed wise, just his voice is so good. Uh, it's kind of one of those moments I didn't appreciate him until he was gone, like overall, like, mm -hmm. uh, because he did the Super Bowl, yeah. like, 
yeah. later. And it was great. And I was like, oh, my God, how many Tom Petty songs like I actually know and actually like? So, like, he's got a discography that's really strong. Um, but I think there are songs that I may enjoy more than American Girl, but kind of what Brooklyn said, this is probably his best constructed song. So I do agree with that. And I definitely deserve he belongs on the list. So good choices. All right. Brooklyn would have won this one. So, so Fair. How much there, there's there? there's definitely somebody that is keeping that score at home just for just it's to pop in. Probably it's definitely Payson. It's absolutely Payson. Oh yeah, Payson loves this show. He sends me a clip like three or four times an episode. <laughs> Shout out to Payson Johnson, one of our best viewers. Thank you so much. Paul called you Big you. Papa. Can I call you Big Papa? <laughs> I bet you ever call me Big Papa. <laughs> All right, Big Papa, let's move on uh, to number 141, <laughs> Purple Haze by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, I have this one lower. Um, I would probably put it in, like, the lower part of the 100s now if I was thinking about it. But, goddamn, Jimi Hendrix and his guitar skills. Just absolutely incredible. The way that he can just pull such emotion out of six strings is absolutely unfucking believable um but i also want to shout out the rest of the Jimi hendrix experience like the other two guys are just like absolutely killing it on this song uh it is a great cohesive band piece and it just kicks so much fucking ass um similar to tom petty uh, I don't think it's my favorite Jimi Hendrix song. I think I still go with like the Wind Cry Wind Cries Mary or like Hey Joe or Voodoo Child. Um, but one thing I want to point out in particular is the is the intro. And I think that kind of does a really good job of setting setting the tone. Cause you have the bass, it's doing like the, the standard kind of like octave thing. And then Jimmy is doing uh something that's called like the like the devil's tritone. Um the Best examples of that usage in the guitar. Think of think of the intro to YYZ by Rush, or think of the in, think of the the main riff to The Simpsons, where it just sounds off kilter enough, but it uh, but it eventually fits to to the tune as well. Um, that 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 lick in particular as well is is oft is mimicked so much like it's almost in that stairway to heaven um aspect of like oh if i get a new guitar like let me let me try this out to see to see how it see how it sounds um also has one of the greatest uh misheard lyrics of ever a lot of people have interpreted oh. of uh excuse me while i kiss this guy and it's like what jimmy hendrix is gay and especially at that time that it would have been like groundbreaking news because being gay was literally a sin back then um but uh but yeah uh uh, similar to what Andrew was saying, the ex the experience in general, like the drummer in particular, is giving this really like kind of ginger baker as performance, kind of kind of minimalist, but kind of filling in the rest of the sound because like Jimmy is absolutely the star of this, and they never they never really shy away from us. Uh, and quick shout out to the other two members of the band who are Mitch Mitchell and Noel Redding. Um, shout out to you guys. You guys are underappreciated musicians in the annals of rock history. Um, but Cody. What are your thoughts on the Jimi Hendrix experience? Uh, this is going to get me in trouble. Uh -oh. um, let's be real, guys. In my opinion, I think Jimi Hendrix gets a lot of credit for being good with the guitar and like put there for that value. I don't love the song. I don't think it does anything. And as somebody that doesn't respect guitars as much as I should, I guess, uh, big problems. Like, again, I if I don't cool. know your name, I don't care about you. <laughs> True. Um, but he's a really good singer, but overall, like a really good guitarist. But like overall, the song just doesn't. I've heard it a lot, but I think it's mostly like, uh, I don't know how to put it. Like, I think he, get, he gets it for, you know, the name. I don't think the song is that great. So, sorry. Okay. Uh, Deserving the spot. People should listen to Jimi Hendrix if you like Jimi Hendrix. I just, I don't know many Jimi Hendrix songs that I'm not going to go chasing uh, a ton of them. So, I'm trying to think of how many other ones that we have coming down the line. I think it may just be one more, maybe two. One, one more for sure. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get to it when we get to it. Mm, I don't know about that one. I don't think that when you are going to use it, uh, but we'll find out. Because it's past the 50 mark. Got it. Maybe. I don't remember, to be honest. I know how to read you like a back 
<laughs> card. I, I know. I legit. I legit don't remember. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next song because I know Brooklyn has it lower. As I look to see where that song is coming, "Bad Reputation" by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Um. One thing I would appreciate it in particular that not a ton of punk songs really do uh, is is the key change um, and how she's able to kind of kind of pull that pull that off. Um, I think one of my I think probably my favorite line in this is I believe it's like the like the third verse. Um, I don't give Dan a my reputation. I've never been afraid of any any deviation, uh, and I don't really care if you think I'm strange. I ain't, I ain't gonna change um, because especially like. Especially where she was at the time, um, being being really kind of the the center the center for for rock and roll and that really kind of like edgy that edgy kind of kind of vibe, all, almost a precursor precursor to grunge uh, in in a, in a sense. Um, but like the very kind of like Ramones esque uh, chorus, like oh no, not me, and then just like the the response of me 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 me, and it just really kind of ramps up the uh, the, the the pace of it all. Um, I say what you will about about Ronda Rousey. I think it's a great it's a great walkout song. I'm not as super sold on Ronda Rousey, especially given given her given her past and whatnot. But if anybody if anybody uses it as a walkout song, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Like fucking right. Um, it's just, it's, it, it does what it needs to do in a very short time. I think this song in particular is how long, uh, do, 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 it's like two forty five or something like that. Yeah. Two, uh, two forty nine. Exactly. Yeah. I'm kind of proud of myself. Way to go. Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, Brooklyn. I appreciate the support. This is why you're the best co-host in the game. Um, so real quick, yeah, Cody, you won't be able to get to veto that one song. Ha ha ha. Um, but this song is just a punch in the face. But it's the best kind of punch in the face. Because it hits you in the face with fucking rock. Um, <laughs> this song just floors it from the word go. It takes you on the fucking drive. Joan Jett, I, th- I, you know, I think the uh, the whole precursor to grunge is very fitting. It's like her in like Neil Young, um, and yeah, it, it's literally just like the wild cacophonous energy of this song, which is just absolutely takes you on like a trip. Joan Jett's snottiness as she delivers these lyrics is just so perfect in like that "fuck you, respect me" kind of way. Um, yeah, I just have, I have so much respect uh, for this song and for Joan Jett as an artist. Turned down from, I want to say, like 17 record companies all said no to her. And like, this was essentially their response. <laughs> and then, like, way to fucking go, guys. Nice job. Uh, Brooklyn, I want to get your opinion on something while uh, we're waiting for Cody. Okay. Uh oh wait never mind Cody's here that saved me from thinking of something on the spot Cody what are your thoughts? <laughs> uh Ronda Rousey ruined the song <laughs> I'm sorry it just is like I don't hear the song in here <laughs> I hear Ronda Rousey like yeah I just don't I mean it's fine I think it's a good song I think she has it's a raw punk song, like it's got that elements. I think a lot of people can relate to it. It just was oversaturated for me. All right, and I think that's fair. I think just songs get overplayed. Like it's, I don't know if it's on the list, so I don't want to ruin something. But so don't let me know if it's on the list. But if somebody told me, I, you know what song I love? I love "Don't Stop Believing." Great, that song has been buried for me. Like it's been burned to death. I think so. we talked about that on one we, of the Yeah, episodes. we we talked about it. I, I remember the argument in particular of yes, I know it's overplayed, but go back to the first time that you heard Don't Stop Believing. Okay. How yeah, it was you guys already put it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like low on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's the same version. Yeah, if I go back to the first time I ever saw it, holy crap. Now it's just been played to death. So this is one of those songs. Songs just get burned for people. It happens. All right. So uh let's move on to the song that Honestly, I thought Cody was talking about Tom Jones earlier. Now I realize it's a song that's later. Train in Vain, Stand By Me by The Clash. 
Uh, I realized it's the other song that has parentheses now. I get it. We'll talk about that later. Um, I have this one. Sense, though, right? Tom Jones yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. Um, that other song, no clue how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> they are completely different songs. Um, the Clash, aka the only band that matters. Um, there is just something about this guitar line that is just in, like, from the get go, like you instantly recognize it right away. It's really catchy and it's really infectious. Um, I, I I think it's a harmonica that gets like used as an ostinato throughout this entire song. And it's such a great touch to um, the, the clash don't normally use something like that. Uh, and I think it was just like a great addition to this song. I remember listening to London calling the album and like, London calling the song absolutely fantastic song. This song popped up and I immediately went, wait, what is this particular song? Um, it's another one where it's short, it's sweet, it does what it needs to do and it gets the fuck out, but it's just so immediately ear grabbing um, that it it's hard to kind of top that sticky of the vocal melody and the instrumentation, the production and all that jazz. Um, I remember when this came up on 500 stones, like it, it was showed up on like the playlist for the next episode. And I was like, really? Um, Cause I, cause like this, this got tons of radio, radio play for like the, like we play everything radio station. This is, this is the song that you play at like two o'clock for like to kind of ramp people up for the rest, rest of the work day. Um, so musically, I think it's I think it's fine. Like the the kind of like the slap style of I I don't know if it's if it's the guitar or bass. I I want to say it's guitar just on like on where on where kind of sits. Well. Yeah, because they're like they're plucking like especially hard to kind of really get that like hard hard hitting sound. But the lyrics in this are fucking crazy. Like it's basically like a fuck you breakup song. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when you get into like the like the, one of the last lines of verse two, uh, it's like so alone I keep the wolves at bay, and there's only one thing I can say. Like you didn't you didn't stand by me, and like that's such a fitting such a fitting line, um, because like in that in those moments, like especially like fr like fresh after you're you're like how do I process like all these things and like and like if something dramatic sort of happens, it's like oh well, like I can't I can't go to that can't go to that person, and like instead of instead of going back to that, that old pattern, like you basically have to just be like, no, like you, like you weren't there for these, for the, for these, for these cru crucial moments. Um, and I, I, I like it because it's um, a, like a trend, I guess, of, li of songs that have come up on this list. It's this upbeat song, but then you dive into it and it's like, no, like this is, this is angry. Uh, Cody, have you ever heard this song before? Nope. I've only listened, heard one song by Stan, that said "Stand by Me" in the title. Um, definitely not Tom Jones vibes on this one either. Um, <laughs> no idiot would ever say that. Uh, the thing is, like the, you said, like anger, but like upbeat, but anger. His voice just doesn't translate it. Like I don't know. Like I think this song, this may be completely wrong. I don't know. I'm not that familiar with the Clash, so I don't know. But I don't love his voice in general. I'm just not in love with it. So with the take is it's it's weird when he like he sings these lyrics but it doesn't sound like they could come off angry but I'm not getting that I'm getting like not that it's weird I don't hate the song it's like constructed I think it's right I think the lyrics are really good it just doesn't hold as much as I would like so yeah that's only thing. I'm trying to remember which which one sings it because the Clash had two vocalists that they used. They used Mick Jones and they used Joe Strummer. I want to say that this was a Mick Jones song. No, to, to the wikis. Yeah. So Cody, you may like uh, songs that the other vocalist sings more. If that's okay. the case. Um, we're definitely going to be talking about another one of their songs that I do think is by the other vocalist later on. So. We'll definitely find that out if that's the case. List track listing personnel. Uh, Vic Jones was the lead. It is Vic Jones. So you're probably at Joe. You might like Joe Strummer's vocals better. Okay. 
Uh, all right, yeah. so let's move on then to number 138, Believe by Cher. Uh, Brooklyn has this higher than I do, so uh, Brooklyn gets to talk about this first. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is a queer anthem. Uh, it's made sense that uh, whenever I when it because like we're talking about like ooh la la. Uh, Ooh, la and this were the first two songs that I that I ever heard, um, and it's just like it's a club banger, um, especially that that bass that bass line, how it how it kind of stays steady throughout it, like especially again the opening lyrics, like no matter how hard I try, you keep pushing me aside and I can't break through. Um, I like the effect on it. I think is just it's the right level, especially given when when it was released, like late like late nineties. It was really like um, when like like clubs were clubs were hitting it up, and then like um, it's it's really prominent now because because a couple of days ago we watched a documentary on uh, it was called Two Ninety Nine um, Queen West, um, and it was uh, it was about uh, much music, it's like the Canadian version Canadian version of MTV, and they had a show called uh, Electric Circus, and it was literally just like people dancing at dancing at a club, club to songs, and that's that's the kind of sound that people people were going for. That really kind of um, acts or really kind of pushing like the the escapism um, of it as well. And then also like just how they kind of arrange the chorus, like the "Do you believe in life after love?" And then you get that trill, like not the trilling, but like the descending kind of guitar at the end, similar to like "Sweet Caroline," like the "Bop Bop Bop" moment. I think everybody kind of naturally like sings that guitar part in in between in between the words, and like I can feel something inside me say, "I really don't think you're strong. You're strong enough." Um, but uh, but yeah. It's it it's a it's a great song. One thirty eight, I think, is is the perfect placement for it. Is my question to Andrew though, because you have it at two fifty four. What yes. what puts it at like just below the like the average line? What puts it there? Yeah, because like yeah, because two because two fifty would would definitely be kind of like the median of like oh this is the top half and like this is the bottom. Well, two fifty is exactly where it had one way or another. Okay, um, so that's yeah. Yeah, so and I like this song not as much as one way or another. Um I think that's just my answer, to be completely honest with you. Um yeah, so I'm someone who when it comes to electronic dance music, I always kind of like mix up like what subgenre it is. So if I'm wrong about this, I apologize, but I think this is house music. Um and like what great production to have behind Cher's vocals. Um, like, this kind of music really fits the color and the tonality of her voice absolutely perfectly. It's one of the first songs to use auto-tune that way, um, to where it really enhances the personality of the vocals, and it's not meant to disguise the vocals, which, to anyone slathering their voice in auto-tune, you're doing it wrong. That this is how you do it. Um, but I think the thing that really puts the song over the top for me, it's the lyrics. Um, because there were multiple times when it popped up in my car as I was listening to our playlist for this, and I was like kind of singing along to it, and I kind of got choked up when I like like understood the emotional weight behind the lyrics. Um yeah, so it's just a, a beautiful blend of elements that just, in theory, probably shouldn't work. But they just work incredibly well. This is one of those songs that, it's one of the first songs I remember being as big as it was when I was growing up. And I think it's stuck with me since then. Uh, Cody, we're about the same age. Uh, do you remember this song when it came out, or like? Oh yeah. It... Okay. Um, ninety nine, right? Somewhere around there, I want to say that. Might it be doesn't right. really matter. It's just like I that. Ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, my mom was a big Cher fan, so I've I've grown up listening to Cher a long time in my life. Like, not not my favorite Cher song by any means. Um, oh. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. No, ninety nine. Yeah. Huh. If I could turn back time, turn back time is really good. I really like uh, uh, just like Jesse James. Um, Ooh, I think there's good choice, good choice, yeah, great choice. Uh, but um, uh, she just her voice just works. 
just works. It's deep. It's rasp. Like she just has this. And like this song, I do like. I've heard this song now slowed down, slowed down, and I really dig a slowed down version of the song. But overall, you have zero problems. Like this song, I was surprised at you two because I'm like, this might be a little ridiculous, but I really like the song too. But you guys have it there, so respect. I think, I think it definitely probably got overplayed at the beginning. I remember hearing a yeah. lot growing up, and then it went away for a while, and that's coming back. So yeah. Anytime Cher, I think Cher get, doesn't get enough credit for how great she truly is. Shout out to Cher. Uh, She's a right. bad, bad Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. If you look at her backstory, like, it's fucking incredible. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. All right. Moving on to number 137. Sign, Seal, Delivered, I'm Yours by Stevie Wonder. I have this one lower, so I'm going to start this off. Um that opening guitar line, I don't know what they did on the, the production, but to make the guitar sound like that, it just shimmer and gleam and like glow and just like have that element of funk to it. It's just absolutely perfect. And then fucking Stevie comes in and just knocks it out of the park in the first fucking line of this song. Like a fool, I went and stayed too long. Now I'm back and wondering if love's still strong. Ooh, baby. I like I'm not doing it justice. Um, but like, yeah, it, it like I, I don't really have much to say about this song. It's just a perfect pop song, perfectly produced. The instrumentation is outrageous, as you would expect on the Stevie Wonder song. And Stevie Wonder, it's just one of his best vocals. Like, it's just an incredible piece. Uh, yeah, not a, not a ton to say about this as well. I, that guitar effect that, that I think you're talking about, I be, it's, it's, I believe it's meant to mimic a sitar. Like I was the, just like, about the, to say, like, it's like, like the Indian like. song guitar, like that really kind of like e echoey kind of sound, like heavy kind of reverb or whatever. Um, but to kind of to go off on the instrumentation, um, I love in these types of songs when the horns are kind of like peppered in. Like you mentioned that first line, um, like he, like he gives the line, the backing vocals kind of give their, Ooh, like their Ooh moment. And then he just had this sort of like, from, from the sax. And I think that's just used uh, so effectively. I think what has it at 300 is outside of that first verse. I don't really remember a ton other than like the chorus and where I'm kind of like, when he kind of goes, when he goes off rhythm, I like it's, it's a very cool moment in songs when you go off, off of the track and you're just kind of like, you're kind of riffing in a sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an all time song. It was on the list both times. It doesn't, it shouldn't come off. Cody, I know you're a Stevie fan. All right, listen, I think this is the song that he should be most known for. In my opinion, I know the other one gets a lot of play. It's a little like it has play. And I think it's really good. This song is just no question. This song plays, and I'm just like, as soon as it gets going, it is like vocals, composition of like how it's put together is just everything I want in a song. It's got the riff, like when I said goodbye, and now I'm back and not ashamed to cry. Ooh, baby, here I am, sign, seal, delivered, I'm yours. Like, let's go. Like, again, he is, his vocals make no goddamn sense no 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 like who higher power whatever you believe in took his eyesight and said here you go we'll make up for it and like this like that's crazy like it just it's crazy even this though there's a lot of people believe he can see but that's the point. well how else was he able to catch that microphone stand cody how was he able to do that <laughs> if you've never seen dr gray talk about him calling him at three in the morning and he's like, "What the hell does it matter to Stevie? It's three a.m., three p.m. It don't matter to him. He doesn't. He doesn't know. The, he doesn't know it's dark outside. <laughs> what does it matter?" And Kevin Hart is dead. Like can't can't contain himself. It's one of the best interviews ever. All right, let's move on to number one hundred thirty-six. One that I think Cody is very excited about: "Paradise" by the Dashboard Light by Meatloaf. Brooklyn has this one a lot higher than I do. I I will admit ahead of time, I will admit ahead of time, it should have been much higher on my list. 
Yeah, this is this is absolutely a top 50 song. If you love Bohemian Rhapsody, if you love scenes from an Italian restaurant, it's basically kind of the same thing. This like big epic with multiple parts. Um, I got to do this at karaoke like in, uh, in the summer um, with a with a with a friend of mine. Um, and just like just being able to go like super ham fisted in into the delivery is just it's so fun to do. Uh, and then like this kind of the like the piano, how it kind of kind of plays in there. Like I remember all the little things if it happened only yesterday. I was walking by the lake and there was not, not another car in sight. Um, and then like uh, just how it kind of slows down in the chorus. Uh, oh, it's cold and lonely in the deep dark night. And like, I can see paradise by, by the dashboard light. And like, I think we need the banner for this one. This is absolutely about sex. Um, <laughs> what? I know Cody, so, you're, Cody, you're no. as, as, and then, I like, this is about a funeral. I think what, I think what puts it in the top 50 and like where it gets really smart is that, is that baseball analogy that they use in the middle of it that's really going on here? Uh, it's like he's 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 heading for second and in the in there, you know, he's, he's trying to steal third and the dirt safe at third. This kid's really making things happen out there. Um, but then, like, it's so satisfying to hear this in uh, in like a dance setting or like with a bunch of people. And then, like, you get all the girls basically get to like stop right there. I want to know right now before we go any further. Do you love me? Uh, and then, like, that just that section and in general is is so fun and like the rounding the rounding aspects in it um i you can't get tired of of this song at all it's an all-time summer tune um i think yeah i would say it's 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 definitely better than under the boardwalk which gets which is like i think the unanimous number one okay we didn't need to throw that song under the bus but uh under the boardwalk <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm just more mad that I didn't think of that myself. So, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Um, Jim Steinman, Jim Steinman, Jim Steinman, Jim Steinman, Jim Steinman. Like that. I don't think that there's another person who can write a song the way that Jim Steinman could. Like that dude was just an incredible writer. Um, like he wrote like most of Meatloaf's stuff and Bonnie Tyler as well. Like it's wild. Um, so if you wanted like someone who could write like an eight to 10 minute, like epic rock piece, you went to Jim fucking Steinman. Um, but yeah, meatloaf is absolutely crushing this as well. Um, uh, I love the baseball part as, uh, too. Um, they actually wrote like that word for word for this song. It's not like they took actual like baseball cuttings and like inserted it into the song as some people think. Um, no, they wrote those words for this song. Uh, and it shouldn't work at all. It should come across as really stupid, but it just fucking nails it. Because whatever the instrumentation is behind it, it's like guitar, bass, and like some other elements. Yeah, it's a, this like super funky bass line. Like get, like getting to getting to see it live, and then just like you can basically keep your eyes on the bass player because it's such a hard fucking line to not only like get right, but then hold for that long. Yeah. And the dichotomy of the song is just like absolutely perfect between him and her. And um, it's a song about like young love going completely awry after uh, after one night of him promising to spend the rest of his night life with her uh, and just them kind of hating each other at the end. Um, it it's just a really tight, incredibly well written song. It would probably make my two hundreds uh, if I had to redo this now. But yeah, no, absolutely incredible. Uh, Cody, this is one that I'm almost positive that you were super hyped for the moment you saw it on the playlist. Top fifty, without a doubt, probably top twenty. To be honest with you, I love this flipping song. I mean, they literally put. They use baseball terms, which is baseball terms for hooking up in a flipping song. And right when he's about to score, um, it's uh, like every metaphor is like young love, teenage love, having sex. And so like it will feel all right in the morning, like all these things like and a guy just doing everything he can to convince her to like let him do it. And she's yes. like putting her foot down be like. Will you love me? For, I'll give you an answer in the morning. No, I know right now. And they're like, 
Yes, I love you till the end of time. I swear. And like young person, get hurt. And now I'm waiting for the end. Yeah, and then it just does a complete one inning. Yeah, her giving his like her virginity or whatever to him like and then him staying with it and now i'm praying for the end of time to hurry up and arrive because if i have to spend another minute with you i don't think that i will do this <laughs> like i'll never break my promise or forget my vow but god only knows for the end of time so i can end my time with you and then it's, it was long ago and it was far away but it was so much like, so much fun in a song like i'm just like smiling from here because it's like because i would say like the love you till the end of time like goes for a while will you love me forever like yes whatever just let me do it and then he can't get out of it it's just like a perfect but he loves songs always have like this an interesting like ending to the song like two out of three ain't bad like he gets in love with this woman and she hits him with the same thing like there was a guy long ago. Listen, but two eight and three ain't bad. Like, it's just a beautiful where he always ties in the song, like how he closes. And this song is like, like I remember, like it's so long but so beautiful. I love the song. Great choice. Could could be higher. One thirty six. I will gladly take. It. All right, all right. So let's move on to what song uh, just squeaked by it. Dancing Queen by ABBA. Um, so I have the slower. Y'all, y'all know what what to do for when this song comes on. You are the dancing queen, young and Come on, like that. That hook alone is just absolutely perfect. Um. And something else about this song that, like, I've grown to appreciate with more and more listens to it is the instrumentation. The instrumentation for this song is absolutely incredible. Those may be some of the best drums on a pop song you will ever hear. Um, It's just so tightly produced. Those hooks that they just throw throughout the song, it's not just in the chorus, but they're just like sprinkled throughout and they just like grab your ear every single second. I think the men have like, they have like this really light backing vocal during the chorus, but I think that it just like really elevates how good the women in this group are. Um, Yeah. It is just a incredibly tightly written, incredibly tightly produced constant popcorn of an earworm song ever made um yeah i think i have this as my number two ABBA song i i i still believe that gimme 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 is a is a better song in terms of like there's a like a dance song production but we're talking about all the great things about dancing queen i love the harmonies in the in like the chorus especially when you get like you can dance you can jive so i think it does a really good job of having this like this slow little build because everything else outside of it is pretty pop is pretty much pop like the like the same kind of like pop chord structure that you're that you're familiar with like like gc e minor d kind of that that's music theory stuff um but just the little the little tension that they create in that moment uh is, is incredible and then i love the piano the, the piano in it the little to do to do to do um and i think the only other band that can really pull off strings this well is el is elo yeah um and just the, like even the little interlude that they have where it's just the strings kind of give, gives it their, their chance to shine but yeah in a in a in a in a disco setting like i think it is it's the right tempo to kind of like get you get you warmed up um but yeah also uh glee does a really really good cover cover of this um uh, one little thing I want to add in that I forgot to mention before we throw it over to Cody is that there's something about the translation like from Swedish to English that really helps this song a lot because there's little things peppered throughout like where they play the ro- the rock music just like adds such a little element to it. It's just so perfect. Um, but Cody, are you a dancing queen? No, I mean, 
I didn't like the song for the longest time, but it's grown on me over the years. Like Abba, like Abba's like music is not a hundred percent my speed. Um, I think there's musicals that kind of ruin that for me. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of them, but overall, I think the song is like constructed really well, sang really well. And you put this on in the right setting at, a, at like a party, you could have a damn good fun time with it. Like this song can get an entire group going. So overall, great choice. I don't think of, I don't think this list could be complete without. Like I think this song is one of those quintessential songs. All right. So let's move on to 134. Another one that I know that Cody is very happy about. 134 is Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers. Uh, I have it higher. And there is such an elegance and a beauty to this song. Um, I should have done a little bit more like note taking. Um, Give me one sec. So, yeah. So usually, um, Bill Medley is the vocalist that most people associate with the Righteous Brother. But Bobby Hatfield on this song, like Bobby Hatfield, really gets his opportunity to shine. And the way, like the tone and the color of his voice, combined with this wall of sound production and these just this luscious gorgeous instrumentation is just one of the most beautiful combinations in music history like it is it just screams romance um this is one of those songs where i would call this arguably one of the greatest covers of all time um because i I think, and I may be getting this wrong, I think it was a Sam Cooke song first. And I've heard the Sam Cooke version. It's really good. But this is one of those moments, those special rare moments where someone was just able to take it and just take it to soaring, screaming new heights in its beauty and its elegance. Um... Yeah, this is uh, it's it's good. It's similar to Journey. Like it got it gets gets played almost too much. Um, gets used in a lot of movies, um, but it's just it's so pretty. Like the six eight kind of kind of time time structure with it and whatnot. Um, I if we're talking about good covers or like the Nora Jones version, she really kind of strips it down and and makes it even more kind of like kind of sensitive sensitive and fragile in a sense. Um, but yeah, I. I can only guess how Cody feels about this song, so let's let's find out. Uh, this could be my favorite song of all time. I'll be honest with you. I absolutely adore this song. Like, I love it. I think it's such a beautiful rendition of the. Like, I agree. I don't know the version. This is the version I know of it, and I think it like is such like I love that old school like vocals i love just like how it feels the story it's telling i just think it's beautiful i can definitely see why other people would say like it's overrated or overblown or play too much sure this is just one of those that you know what i've had freaking chicken nuggets a lot in my lifetime i still want some chicken nuggets so like at this point like i'm good with it nice chicken nugget with a good dip like <laughs> i ain't complaining i ain't complaining any day of the week so I've had wings. I'll eat wings. So you know what? Give me wings. So great choice overall. Uh, but yeah, I think the song could be very high. 82, I would say probably top 50 for me. But Drum, drums are flats, though, for wings. I think it's flats. Like by flats. Oh, my God. Yeah. Flats. If you're a, chi- you're a child, if you eat a drum, I'm sorry. No. All flats all the time. No question about it. Oh. Uh, if I sit across from somebody that gets drums, I'm leaving the table. No. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I thought something was coming that uh, I had Mr. Producer Man prep for when it came to this song. So Moving it forward? Nah, yeah. I'm going to leave it where it is. I think it's fine. Okay. Well, you 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 heard the Mr. Producer Man. Uh, Three spots or whatever is not going to kill me on this one. Not egregious is the last place. Well, that means it's not as good as... International Players Anthem by UGK featuring Outcast. Uh, Brooklyn, you have this one lower. 
So the thing that I'm really appreciating about this song this time around, because I know I know the first time I was like, I'm not as thrilled on Andre 3000's verse, um, even though I consider him, I think, the best rapper out there. Um, I There's some really cool lines in his verse that I like. Um, then I CC'd every girl that I'd CC around town. And then especially when you get to the part of like spaceships, don't come equipped with rearview mirrors. They dip as quick as they can. Um, and it's about... It's about him, or it's, the song is about getting getting somebody pregnant, and I really like that, really like that line of like, uh, like they dip as they dip as quick as they can, um, because it's like sometimes it's not all not all meant to be, and then it's like he talks about like like a preemie at the womb, my partner yelling too soon, don't do it, and then it's like there's some real kind of like kind of thought put into it that I really like, but then you get into the second verse, and I, and I'm not sure who it is from from UGK, but just like you get the big. You get the big booming bass. It's like my bitch and choosy love or never fuck without a rubber. And it's just it's that's like that's the tone of the song right right there. <laughs> um, like what a I'm way sorry. to I, I, let me song. let me turn down the brightness on my computer. That that whiteness is just really clearing yeah. it up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's there's some really cool lines. Big boy has as a as a really really cool verse in it, and like that's whenever they kind of they take away the rest of the beat. And I think it's just, just the hi hats that are on there and they're just going the kind of like, kind of like a mile a minute. Um, but yeah, um, I, I forget what show it was, but I, but I believe they use it as like the walkout song for the wedding in, in the series, uh, which I think, Oh, I think it's really cool. I'm not sure what it was. It was, a, it was on at a friend's house randomly. Um, so for me, this is one of those songs where, Yes, I love the Andre verse. Um, I love the Big Boy verse as well. Actually, I love the Outcast verses. Um, the other verses, I'm oh, I'm like good with, um, as but I don't love them as much as the other ones. But this is one of those songs where it lands on the list for me solely because I think this is a production masterclass. Like it is a perfect use of a sample all the instrumentation is per placed perfectly in the mix that like boise bass drop like after the uh big boy verse it's just so perfectly timed and perfectly placed that it's just like sonic ear candy so this is one of those songs where yes the flows and the lyrics do have their strengths but the production on this is just immaculate uh but cody do you belong to the international players association heard you say andre and uh big boy and like the whitest thing ever um i'm not a big fan of the song overall like i like parts of it but i don't like absolutely love to it wasn't a part of like a constant like um playlist or like listening to it just wasn't my cup of tea i respect it for what it like was able to like create but overall just this could be of the songs that I've given every week, the song could just like fall to the wayside for me. I just don't know. But I'm a fan of Outcast. I like Outcast a lot. But yeah. Uh, fair warning to anyone watching this who has not heard this before. Um, it does drop one slur real hard. So if you're kind of sensitive to that, fair warning. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on to number 132, the song that I know Cody was talking about when it came to Tom Jones. Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher by Jackie Wilson. I have this lower. I've already answered this question about this. <laughs> I fucking think that this is almost as close to a perfect song as you can get. That bass line is incredible. Those guitars, the, the jangly guitars, just add so much color to this song. Um, that pocket that the groove is able to find, it's just like the most comfortable, warm, sunshiny pocket that you could have possibly found, in my opinion. Uh, Jackie Wilson on this song, Barry Gordy said the greatest vocalist of all time that he's ever heard was Jackie Wilson. And I can completely understand why when it comes to songs like this. Um, I know... Cody has listened to Lonely Teardrops, which is another Jackie Wilson song, that this one, when it when you compare the two songs, this one like beats up Lonely Teardrops so bad that it's bleeding and has to be taken to the hospital, in my opinion. Um, 
it's just the most infectious, sunshiny, romantic, just like earworm of a listen like I've ever heard. And I own the vinyl for this one. Like I love it that much. Uh, yeah, I have this at, at 400. I, I will agree that Jackie Wilson is doing an incredible job job on the song. I think this would be a really tough one to try to try to replicate with, with a cover or like a karaoke. I think what oh, has I've it at, heard one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think what has it for me at 418, I'm not as sold on like the like the instrumentation. Like it's it's just kind of there. Like I'm, I'm not I'm not getting like that thing of being like, oh, wow, like this is what kind of makes it stand out from the rest. The other thing that that's kind of hurting this song as well is that before I heard this, um, there was a Canadian rapper called Classified. He sampled sampled this song, um, and when I hear that song, when I hear this song, I go, I hear that, and I'm like, I kind of want to hear that one, uh, as hear that one, that one more. Um, but that's also just because like Classified's a really really good rapper. Um, but yeah, definitely deserves to be on the list. Twenty six. I, I gotta I gotta do some studying as to as to what puts it there, um, but yeah, it definitely needs to be a top five hundred song. All right, Cody, tell us more about Tom Jones Jr. Tom Jones uh, overall. Tom Jones. Tom, Tom, Tom uh, Mike Jones. Uh, Twenty six makes perfect sense because hit numbers doesn't mean anything to him. He talked passionately about two fifty. He didn't talk passionately about forty four. So they're just numbers. Um, I think it's a fine song, but this seems like what. Bar would be like making his like lunch one day and just like hey, 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 get the pepper, you know, just like hi, 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 you know, just like twice. just adding like little like sauce drip. It's like din 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 hundred percent. So yeah, I think it's fine song. I just twenty six is crazy on the list. Fine. All right, let's move on to the last song we're going to talk about in this section of the list. With or without you by you two. Um, Scott Harvey is screaming somewhere off in the distance. Um, this is one of those songs, like, U2 is one of those acts that over time I've kind of cooled on, but this particular era of U2 is just incredible. Um, and it is a lot to do with the production. The production really does a lot of heavy lifting in the song, creating this like spacious, airy atmosphere. I want to say this was produced by Brian Eno, but I've been wrong before making that claim. Uh, so if it's not him, it's very Brian Eno esque. Um, and yeah, it's just the combination of like the twinkling piano. Um, the soaring guitar line and Bono's vocals. Yeah. It's just a sonic landscape. Uh, you are right that Brian Eno uh, was a producer as well as uh, Daniel, Daniel Lanoi, um, who is, uh, his pro was a, was a, is Canadian. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like this song. Um, what I think what, I think the moment that really got me to fall in love with it was uh, actually just playing it. It was at like a family dinner or something. My uncle, my uncle brought it out and it's like, man, you can play that bass line and you can just, you can just kind of stay on, stay on that. And it's just, it's, it's such a great kind of uh, come together kind of, kind of feeling moment. I think my favorite lines uh, of the song, it's like, there's nothing to win and there's not, nothing, there's nothing left to lose. Like it's kind of that, like kind of like that gray area. Like it's like, it's kind of a breakup, but you're not really sure kind of like how to, how to process it all. Um, I want to respond to one thing. Cause I, cause I know there has been some, there has been some, the edge slander um, mm -hmm. recently in one of the chats. Um, if you think that he's kind of overrated, go try and play one of his riffs. Go like like th this one. The streets. The streets have no name. Um, he's incredibly in influential, especially in like that easy rock kind of sense. Like just the movement that he's doing, and he's kind of like he's basically taking chord structures that you would do from like basic basic guitar, and then just kind of like slide it up in that in that higher octave, and it and as well giving it like that that Irish kind of like kind of rhythm and strum to it. Um, so it may sound it may sound easy upon first glance, but but go try to play it. It's going to take you a while. Cody, what are your thoughts on With or Without You by U2? 
Listen, YouTube pissed everybody else off by putting it on the Apple, everybody's iPhone, and had that album. Like, they lost a lot of credibility with them. They just accepted it. For a it. second, I thought you, you were saying you two as in, like, us two. Yeah, you two bastards. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, you did nothing wrong. I think this song's fine. I don't love it, but I also don't love a lot of you two. Um, I just have never, like, gravitated. Like, when I hear a song, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's you two. I guess I know Bono more than I know you two. Like to be honest with you, like I've seen him more around, but I, yeah, I think it's a fine song. It has good moments. It's got a good build, but like overall, the song is just not up there. It's like one of those, but it's more like I, re- it's more like a um, David Bowie. I respect you two for what they did more than me personally liking them. So I can't discredit them from the list, even though I'm just not a. I don't have that good of a reception with it fair enough so we're gonna do things a little differently uh for the end today um because i know cody has to go um so cody i'm sending you the playlist for next week right now and we're gonna get your thoughts and then i'll go over uh the songs that we win for on appreciate you Mm -hmm. i'm opening it okay i'm expanding okay okay Yeah. Ooh, like that. Ooh, like that. Um, there's one I can veto. Um, oh, like that. But I will say there's some that I don't recognize off the bat. I think this is a little bit more like mystery for me than my title alone. Playing and I will probably know a lot more, but like overall looking, there's a, there's a few that don't just click right away for me. So we'll I kind of figured, I kind of figured looking at this playlist that it's got some less l- widely known songs. As and man, there is one singer that some I guess somebody really enjoys, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, oh, oh yes, <laughs> I think I think I know what song. I don't, I don't, I don't see the playlist, but I believe. I believe I know we're, we're we're getting to a certain moment that I've been waiting for for a while. Okay. See if that's it. Um, Cody, thank you for joining us today. See y'all. Bye bye. Thanks for having bye. me. Uh, all right. So let's just uh, quickly recap what we've done on the list today. By the way, by our shit. Come, I always forget to remind it's, you, Mr. It's, Producer it's, Man. It's, it's shitty. I I saw the shirt in the closet. I'm like, I gotta wear it today. I gotta wear it today. And then and then we we're just we we're rushing to get some things done and then i came up here and i was like fuck i don't have a shirt on all right so with that being said real quick 150 space oddity by david bowie now 149 right down the line by jerry rafferty uh 148 is ooh la la by faces 147 is ever fallen in love with someone you shouldn't have by buzzcocks uh 146 is hound dog by big mama thornton Dream On by Aerosmith comes in at number 145. When a Man Loves a Woman by Percy Sledge is uh, squeaking in there at 144. One Way or Another by Blondie sitting at number 143. And at 142, we got American Girl by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. 141, we have Purple Haze by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. 140's Bad Reputation by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. 139 is Train in Vain, Stand by Me by The Clash. Believe by Cher comes in at 138. Uh, 137 is Sign Seal Delivered, I'm Yours by Stevie Wonder. Paradise by the Dashboard Light by Meatloaf comes in at 136. Dancing Queen by ABBA comes in at 135. 134 is Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers. International Players Anthem by UGK featuring Outcast is sliding in at 133. 132 is Your Love Keeps Lifting Me Higher and Higher by Jackie Wilson. And With or Without You by U2 coming in at 131. Uh, Brooklyn, any last thoughts before we send this uh, ship off into the harbor? Uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. All right, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> for Brooklyn Vale. That I'm Andrew James Barr. This is uh, off off our stones, an affiliate of like 500 stones, an affiliate of the video store. Buy their shit. Uh, south south of the video store. Have you not been paying attention to the theme? I, I don't pay attention to anything much anymore. My my <laughs> attention span is just like really shot lately. Uh, 
But <laughs> thank you all for watching. Keep on rocking. Drive safely. Hey, Cody's not here to tell the people to uh, not drive safely. Drive, drive on safe. No, no.